Come on. All right, boys. Let's rock and roll. As someone familiar with the series, Star Fox Zero is immediately confusing. On the surface, it appears to be a modern extension of Star Fox 64, but Zero plays by its own rules. It relies on the gamepad's display and motion sensing capabilities, asking that you divide your attention between two screens, one for flight and one for shooting, which fundamentally changes how you play the game. Zero has a few tricks up its sleeves when it comes to vehicles too, including the Walker mech transformation for your R-Wing jet. You also have access to a slow, drone-like copter in the Gyro Wing, which packs a tiny tethered robot that you can lower and navigate through small spaces to access computer terminals. Once lowered, you look through the robot's eyes using the gamepad's screen to pinpoint your target and hack away, though it's a process that's more tedious than it is enjoyable. More than anything else in Zero, piloting your R-Wing is a joyous experience. Your booster jet communicates a great sense of speed as you twist in mid-air and flip around behind enemies, leaving bursts of energy in your wake. You also have to contend with tight spaces, tipping your wings at just the right angle to slip through small gaps and avoid environmental perils. On second thought, let's take the back way. The Landmaster tank from Star Fox 64 makes its return as well, but new to Zero is the ability to transform the Landmaster into a jet. Though it doesn't match the speed or maneuverability of the R-Wing, it's a welcome bonus that makes piloting a slow tank a tad more interesting in practice. Most stages in Zero are on rails, where you move forward at a constant rate. In other scenarios, typically boss fights, you switch into all range mode and take full control of your R-Wing, and it's here where Zero's complicated control scheme becomes a center of attention, and not in a good way. Now in theory, Zero's controls allow you to be a more capable marksman, picking off enemies with greater speed and accuracy than before. The catch though is that you have to look away from your TV and focus on the gamepad's first-person cockpit view while your vehicle flies unattended. You have the option to press a button to shift the cockpit view to your TV, but even so, the same disconnect applies. Though you may find some success aiming with a third-person reticle when flying through linear stages, it's actually terribly misleading. Rather than indicate where your shot will actually land, the reticle in Zero's third-person view is representative of your line of sight from the cockpit. Once you enter all range mode, you have no choice but to switch between first and third-person perspectives. Here, the camera becomes unshackled and floats around your vehicle rather than directly behind it. Your over-the-shoulder line of sight is stripped away. Although you can lock onto enemies that come into view, it's only the camera that's affected, not your aim and it took hours to become fully acclimated to Zero's new rules, but it did eventually click. While I still resort to feeling out my aim during linear levels, I'm more comfortable and effective in all range mode. The high learning curve was enough to make me put down the controller and walk away more than once early on, but every time I came back, my skills improved. My relationship with Zero did get off to a rocky start, but I was in a better place once I convinced myself to forget everything Star Fox 64 taught me and accept Zero on its own terms. Now the new controls don't necessarily make for a more fun space combat game, and I found myself wavering between excitement and apathy when going through the campaign. No matter how you slice it, Star Fox has always been a series about flight and movement, and Zero dilutes that formula by forcing you to prioritize shooting. That's not to say you never had to fire at enemies in the past, but the act of aiming was tied to movement, which in practice maintained the ever-present joy of flight. Now, the act is tied to a complex control scheme that's a mild but regular source of frustration. Use your brakes! Zero is saved in part by its presentation. Blue skies and verdant hills with crimson enemies give way to vast expanses of outer space, the perfect canvas for lasers and radiant stars. With the added gravitas from the soundtrack and the quips from your allies during battle, Zero often echoes the Star Wars film's great battles, albeit with a cast of cute and furry heroes. No time to celebrate, we've got a fight on our hands. The old material is handled with care, and later levels do a good job of standing out, with new mission designs and set pieces that feature impressive scale. By the end of my first playthrough, I was eager to go back and retry old levels, in part because I wanted to put my newfound skills to the test, but also because Zero's campaign features branching paths that lead to new locations. My second run through felt way better than the first, and solidified my appreciation for the game. While I still don't love the new control scheme, it's a small price to pay to hop into the seat of an R-Wing and dive back into combat. Zero is a good looking homage with new secrets to find and challenges to overcome. It doesn't supplant Star Fox 64, but Star Fox Zero does the series legacy justice. 